In this video, I will present you another one of the latest plants I got. Tiburon is a strain of Trucasurus bridgetsi that is quite fat, looks great, and can have very long spines. I was emailed this photo and asked if I would be interested to buy some cuttings. This Bolivian torch has ferocious spines, hence the name Tiburon, which stands for shark in Spanish, and is also the Spanish title of the movie Jaws. The spines of Tiburon can reach 4 inches in length, especially lower down on the stems. Imagine using this one as a fence for your house. Even scarier than barbed wire, while of course looking a million times better. Truly a majestic and dangerous plant. It belongs to a Spanish cactus seller who got all of his plants from his dad. Or at least that's what I've been told. This is not one of the cacti that he normally sells. I asked for prices and was told to make an offer. So I made one, based on this photo, for the four tallest stems with flower buds. When I got the cuttings, however, it was a bit of a shock. I did not get the full length stems that I wanted. Instead, I received much, much shorter top cuts, less than half the size of what I expected them to be. And they were not even of the same size. It looks like the seller just cut each of them at any length that he felt like. That was not a good feeling, especially since I paid quite a lot of money for them. My original offer, which I believe was fair, was actually turned down by the seller, who made a counter offer slightly higher. I agreed to it, as I really wanted those stems, especially since they had flower buds on them. But what a letdown to get such short pieces. It's not for no reason that I wanted long pieces, it's to make sure that they don't etiolate and that they keep on flowering in coming years. Such short cuttings are bound to etiolate. The piece most affected appears to be the one on the left here but I'm pretty sure the other three will also etiolate to some degree. The importance of getting long top cuts is something I talked about in my recent video How to Avoid Etiolation on a Short Top Cut. Make sure you check out this video if you haven't. And it's not just about etiolation. They are unlikely to flower again for a few years. If you want a cutting to carry on flowering the following year, you need a lot of plant mass, which translates to a piece that is as long as possible. When I got the cuttings, they had just been freshly cut, so the first step was to let the cut ends heal for a few weeks. I found a spot for them underneath this table, somewhere with good air circulation, which is extremely important in order to avoid mold, and where they receive sun, partially, for only a couple of hours a day. It was the peak of the summer, temperature-wise, and normally I would protect them from the heat by placing them outside of direct sunlight altogether, with just a good amount of ambient light. But since these cuttings had flower buds on them, I thought that some sun might be needed so that the flowering process completes. I know from experience that the flowering process can get cancelled by some time spent in complete darkness. It happened to me with a pacanoi cutting that had buds which I forgot in the dark for two weeks. The buds never turned into flowers. Admittedly, there was total absolute darkness, not just in the shade. But just to be safe, here, I thought some amount of sun might be beneficial. Once the cuts were healed, I placed them in air pots so that they make roots, with my usual rooting mix of one part potting soil to one part perlite. Air pots, like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, provide excellent air circulation, which translates to more roots and might reduce the likeliness of rot. They are cheap, not much more expensive than regular plastic pots, and I recommend them for the rooting phase. Once the plants have built a good root system, which often takes a few months, then I suggest you replant in regular pots, as I am doing now. The blue plastic gloves that I am using are to keep my hands clean from the soil. They are not meant to protect against spines. No kind of gloves will protect against long adult spines. This kind of spines will even go through leather gloves. To handle plants with dangerous spines, I suggest using a magazine. The spines normally cannot go through a thick layer of paper. The soil mix here is my usual one for adult columnar cacti. Two parts potting soil, one part perlite or washed pumice, and one part earthworm castings. It's a very fertile mix, mostly thanks to the castings, which is what Trichocerus plants like. Feel free to alter this recipe if you want. Just don't reduce the perlite or pumice as 25% of it, I think, is the minimum to ensure good drainage. I personally tweaked that recipe by adding about 10% of local soil to it. Where I live, there are cacti growing in the wild, 
and that local soil is very rich in minerals that are beneficial to cacti. But that step is totally optional. Your plants will do great even without it. With this other tiburon cutting, I don't use any magazine. Instead, I hold the plant with my left hand, avoiding the spine. Be very careful handling very spiny plants like this one. Years ago, I had to go to the hospital a few times for a piece of Bridges' spine that remained stuck between two bones of one of my fingers. I was slicing a top cut that was above me on a large plant and it somehow landed on the back of my hand. You should also wear protective googles when handling and cutting cacti with long spines, especially if those are eye level or above. You may notice that the pot I am using is broken. These plastic pots are inexpensive, but since they are exposed to the sun, they will not last forever. This one is about 7 to 8 years old and starts to be very brittle. I am only using it here because I am running short of new pots. Hopefully, it won't completely disintegrate before I need to repot this plant in a few years. Thankfully, these pots are cheap to replace. I buy them from cannabis grow shops for €1.50 each, which currently converts to $1.50 US. These are prices in Europe. I'm not sure about prices in North America. I could actually get them cheaper in black, but the white color helps to keep the soil cooler, which is a plus in hot countries. The four tiburon cuttings did flower and fruit shortly after I bought them which kind of makes up for the bad buying experience as I was able to produce loads of super interesting crosses this summer. There are loads of them. I have Bridget C. Tiburon crossed with a wide range of Pacanoi strains and even with Perivianus Carbonella and that one is going to be very spiny. As you can see, I've produced six different crosses with Tiburon as the mum, which means you can expect the babies to look mostly like their mum. And I also have seven crosses with Tiburon as the dad where, on the contrary, the genetics of Tiburon will not be dominant. All these seeds are available now, as well as many other interesting new crosses. So if you want me to email you the full list, together with information and photos of all the plant parents, please send me an email mentioning which is your country. My email address is in the description of this video. I will also make it appear on the screen now. It's sanpedromastery at protonmail.com. Ideally, I would like to grow every single one of these crosses. I will probably start before Christmas, indoors with artificial lights, and I will report on them in my small container video series. Unfortunately, I may not be able to produce any more tiburon seeds in the next few years, since I think such short cuttings are unlikely to flower again in the near future. We'll see. But at least, this year I have managed to get tons of crosses with tiburon, so I'm happy about that. I don't know how fast Tiburon grows, but I guess we will find out next year, or better the following year once the plant is fully established. I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more videos coming in what is proving to be a fairly popular series among my subscribers, so make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss any of those spotlights. That's me signing off, but I'll be back soon with more videos.